welcome M. Tien to open today's proceedings with their reply. Councillor, thank you very much. Chairperson, Councillor, ladies and gentlemen of the panel, again just to introduce the team from MTN, my name is Graham de Vries. To my immediate right is Geoffrey Blake and to his immediate right is William Ghanari. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we commend ICASA for the fact that we have been given a right to reply. I've been in this industry for a little over 16 years and if I'm not mistaken this is the first time that something like this has happened. So we commend you and please forgive us if we uh, don't know what to do with a bus once we've caught this bus because we've been chasing the bus for a long time. So thank you very much for giving us another opportunity to talk to you relating to this particular matter. Again, because of the time constraints, we will not deal with each and every aspect that has been raised in the last few days. And the fact that if we do not answer those particular questions um, or allegations today should not be construed as that we either agree or admit that those particular allegations are true. And now that we've done the loyally bit, Ladies and gentlemen, what has become apparent over the last few days is that there is a lot of interest in local loop unbundling. There is still a lot of work to be done in local loop unbundling. But intriguingly, this industry seems to be a, ve a veritable treasure trove of amateur magicians because of the misdirection and sleight of hand that has been displayed and that morphs local loop unbundling into something that it is not. So what we will be do dealing with you today, ladies and gentlemen, is what it is and what it is not. What is or what is not LLU? It is not MVNO. It is not MVNE for that matter. It does not pertain to wholesale pricing of mobile data. Yet it seems to have been the rallying cry of some industry members to use it as a rallying cry to get ICASA to intervene or unbundle the mobile local loop. We believe that ICASA will take wise counsel and be wise counsel and not fall for a cry to help certain members with tough commercial negotiations. It's not spectrum sharing. It's not roaming. But we've heard a lot about roaming in the last few days. It's not wireless local loop. It's not wireless loop. It's not mobile local loop. We've had these terms thrown about and yet no one seems to have been able to come up with a definition that we can actually constructively address. It is not, Councillor, as you have quite rightly stated in the discussion document, which does make it very, very difficult to constructively apply, uh, apply one's mind to it and constructively reply to something which is verbal. So to our knowledge, ladies and gentlemen, there is no regulatory or governing body that has defined what is mobile local loop. So what is LLU? You've seen this slide before. The CASA discussion document states that it is a physical circuit connecting the ECN termination point at the subscriber's premises. Mobile does not have a subscriber premises, so to speak. We go to the EU's unbundled local loop regulations. It's the physical twisted metallic pair circuit connecting the network termination point and so on. Yet we are confronted today, ladies and gentlemen, with a submission or a thought process that mobile needs to be unbundled. Well, let's look at that for a moment. <coughs> You've seen the slide before. There is nothing on the table from any other party that actually states that this is incorrect. There is no local breakout possible at the radio access network. Breakout for data would be at the GGSN. 
since by its very nature calls are mobile, it is impossible to isolate individual areas or BTS. That's the local loop equivalent probably, but that is not what is being asked of you. What you are being asked to do is to work backwards, not from the subscriber premises, but from the core network backwards. And that, ladies and gentlemen, does not fit the purpose. Again, ladies and gentlemen, it's more like the last hundred miles as opposed to the last mile. So let's deal with wireless local loop. We have looked at the proposals and none of them clearly indicate the local nature of the loop. One presentation clearly starts at the core network and then works backwards, not the other way around. Again, missing the point entirely that we are talking about local loops and not about a national network. So, we submit to you, ladies and gentlemen of the panel, that to include wireless local loop is clearly going to provide for some interesting legal gymnastics. We have been confronted with constructs of an antenna being part of a facility and as a result, because of that facility being able or being used in conjunction with frequency, that that is sufficient as a hook to bring it the mobiles or wireless into the local loop unbundling process. It has also been suggested that it is now an economic facility as a result. While that may be a cogent argument, within the subject matter of the discipline of economics, it unfortunately will fail if applied to the constructs and the four corners of the ECA. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, it has to be interpreted in terms of the rules of interpretation of law, and that would, make, that would not make the cut, so to speak. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we have not been given any fact that would suggest that mobile or wireless and the way in which access is to be provided can be confined to local. We've done our research in the time period that we have had because we heard that the ITUT may actually have a definition of wireless local loop. And in the short time that we've had, we've not been able to find a definition of wireless local loop. So ladies and gentlemen, we submit again to you that from a technical and from a legal perspective, there is no local in the wireless local loop and more pertinently, no local in mobile. So in terms of the mobile local loop, ladies and gentlemen, there is the, going to be a temptation to now lob wireless local loop into the net of a local loop unbundling. Let's assume the authority gets past the legal hurdle of interpretation and the economic or the technical hurdles and interpretation. Then, of course, if we look at the section in the act that is being utilized, namely the um, facilities leasing section in the act, then that means that all wireless local loops will be subject to intervention by ICASA. Not only mobile, so all wireless local loops. So, the reason I say this is ICASA is a creature of statute and surely ICASA is going to be even-handed in its application of that particular section. So if wireless local loop is included in a facility, then all wireless local loop needs to be included in that particular facility. That means, ladies and gentlemen, that all the Wi-Fi hotspots will be included. That means, ladies and gentlemen, that smaller ISPs, small ISPs, and we've heard small ISPs operating in the Hex River Valley, will also be included in that particular definition. Quite clearly, ladies and gentlemen of the panel, this could not have been the intention of the legislature. And we believe quite clearly it also could not have been the intention of ICASA. But let's not leave it there. 
I'm sure you will then be subjected to a thought process of that but I am not dominant I am but a small player but the mobiles have significant market power ladies and gentlemen if you are going to put wireless local loop within the construct or the thought process of a facilities lease the idea that you can then claim that I'm not dominant will fall or will have to fall on deaf ears because you can't have it both ways if you then throw in economic principles or economic defenses or legal defenses that I'm not dominant that presupposes ladies and gentlemen that you're into a chapter 10 process so you can't have it both ways you can't put yourself within the construct or within the facilities leasing guidelines include wireless and then not include all wireless or entertain thought processes that this is now only some parties that need to be caught in the net of unbundling so ladies and gentlemen we've we caught in a net of an either or question we believe either we define a facility and keep within the definition and the bounds of what the act says or if we wish to then unbundle quote unquote the wireless local loop or mobile local loop well then we're into a chapter 10 we will have to find out and we've spent quite a number of pages in our written submission on this is there effective competition is there a problem in that particular market should we intervene and if after all of that particular study in the mobile wireless local loop ICASA decides that intervention is necessary then you will need to find out who's actually to blame so to speak who's the party with SMP so then only will you be able to unbundle the local loop and again ladies and gentlemen that assumes that you have gotten past the first two hurdles so what we are saying ladies and gentlemen we are asking for even-handedness by the authority this is seemingly and some members of the industry claiming that a one-size or in fact they don't claim that a one-size fits all but we're saying that if that is to be believed then one size one size will fit all and if you include wireless local loop you need to include all wireless local loop with the application of chapter 10 we then turn to working groups ladies and gentlemen we again commend the CASA for the thought process of a working group because there's a lot to be done in LLU but unfortunately one would clearly have to state what are the terms of reference of these particular working groups if it has not been clarified that it excludes mobile you will have a huge amount of work and I do not know whether you will have the final result in the timeline that everybody is clamoring for so if there to be any fruitful discussions we will have to work on the terms of reference if there is any item that is not agreed for inclusion or any legal principle that have not been clarified unfortunately I believe and we submit to you that just by virtue of people willing to protect their rights in those working groups that the working group thought process may actually not work so again ladies and gentlemen there's nothing local in the wireless local loop and ladies and gentlemen you'll be happy to know that this is my final slide we only finished at seven o'clock last night so we had to work late into the evening to come up with some arguments you will see that I've got some uh, an energy drink and this is not a subtle dig at my competitor 
So what we are asking for, ladies and gentlemen, is regulatory certainty. Open access is not the same as local loop unbundling because we've also heard questions or thought processes that open access, whatever that may mean, may, should be applied after the fact. That, ladies and gentlemen, creates regulatory uncertainty. We will have to create regulatory certainty as to what are we going to talk about and what are we actually talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about fixed line local loop. Nothing more, nothing less. And certainly the last point that we wish to leave you with, ladies and gentlemen of the panel, is that we need investment certainty, and not only for us, but for the rest of the industry as well. We are today confronted with a process that will entail a huge amount of money to be invested in the network if we are to give broadband to all, or a 100% broadband penetration. If there is no regulatory certainty that that which has been put into the ground or that which will still be put into the ground is going to be free from regulatory intervention based on strange imp interpretations of the ECA, you will have to look at the risk that is created in that particular environment. Because people will want to know that that which I put into the ground I will be able to utilize on a commercial basis. So even if I do have something like fiber, because that has also come up, then that particular fiber investment I need to be able to on a commercial basis get a return on investment. Until such time as there has been a decision by the regulatory authority based on detailed analysis that an intervention is necessary, we hope that the regulatory authority will use some regulatory forbearance not to intervene. So ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your time and I'm sure that there may be a few questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, MTN. Okay, I invite questions from the floor for MTN. Thank you, MTN.